what we're going to do now is, is very briefly go over these two, these two surahs. And what are they talking about in these two surahs? Because once we understand why these surahs were revealed and the magnitude of what these surahs can do and protect you, when we recite them, we just won't recite them like we used to recite them. You understand that, man, these are the two surahs that revealed specifically to protect you from magic. You might read them a little bit better. You might read them with a little bit more uh, uh, seriousness or try to comprehend what it is that you're reading. So let's go to these surahs real quick, inshallah. Those who have a Quran, let's go to chapter uh, 113. Chapter 113. And these are the last two surahs of the Quran. They're very short. Very short, but very powerful. So what are they talking about? What are they saying in it? Chapter 113. Allah states, I billahi min ash-shaitan rajeem Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I call, say, I seek refuge with Allah, the Lord of the daybreak. I seek refuge in the Lord for Allah, the Lord of the daybreak. Fala, or the the crack of dawn, the Lord of the crack of the dawn. So we seek refuge in the Lord for Allah from the Lord of the crack of the dawn, from the evil of what He created. So, in this next ayah, we're asking the loss for the law. We're seeking refuge in the loss for the law. In or from the evil of all the things that are created. So, whatever evil in the world, whatever evil that's out there in the world that Allah created, because Allah created everything, we're seeking refuge in the loss for the law from that evil. Whether we can comprehend it, whether we know what it is, whether we know the name of it, where it's at. Because Allah is Rabbil Alameen, He's the Lord of everything that exists. I don't even know all the evils. We don't even know all the evils and goons and goblins and stuff out there that's going on. Secret stuff that's going on. But we ask the Lost Allah to protect us from that evil though, that He created. That He knows about. That only He can protect us from. From the evil of all the things that He created. And from the evil of the darkening night as it comes with its darkness and from the evil of the darkness when it comes from it with its darkness. Right? And we seek refuge and loss for the law from the evil of darkness. Why does the loss for the law talk about the darkness? What happens at dark time? What happens? The jinns come out. Right? The freaks come out at night. The jinns come out at night. And when the street lights, when the street lights come on, where the kids supposed to be? Inside. 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 Shaitan will be out. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said at the time of Maghrib, when the sun sets, take your kids and women and take them home and lock the doors, so the women and the kids should not be out after Maghrib. Again. So this is after Maghrib. After Maghrib, kids and women should be inside. Inside. Women shouldn't be roaming, roaming around the streets at nighttime after Maghrib. Right? Unless they're with their husband or something, but by themselves or just a bunch of women outside at Maghrib. No, this is not acceptable. The Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said in the Hadith, and I'm just going to say the Hadith, you guys can shorthand it. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said that at the time of Maghrib, Shaitan sends out his soldiers. So at the time of Maghrib, Shaitan sends out his soldiers. Okay? Shaitan sends out his soldiers. And we know he got soldiers. Right? Because he said it in the other verse, right? He said, Shaitan and his soldiers, they see you from where you see them not. Chapter 7, verse 27, right? So we know he got soldiers. And the most vulnerable are the women and the children. The most susceptible to being hurt are the women and the children. So we want to have y'all inside under lock and key, not because we're uh, insecure, right? But because this is what the lost brother said through the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in order to protect you and us from hurting somebody. But this is very important. We're seeking refuge with the lost brother from the evil of darkness. 
when the darkness comes in. He said that there's stuff that's coming with the darkness. The goons and goblins are coming. They're coming. Right? A lot of people that do a lot of dirt, they do it at nighttime, right? I, mean, I do my dirt at night. Right? Vampires, they don't even get up till nighttime. That's too early, man. It's too light out there, man. I can't even, man. All the sex goes on, all the clubs, all the sex, all the robbing and stealing and jacking, dope dealing and whatnot. Goes on at nighttime. It ain't going on in the daytime. They're like roaches in, 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 the, in, the, in the daytime. They got to be in their coffin. Dracula. Right? Vampires. It's too light outside. Man, it's, too, it's too bright outside, man. It ain't dark enough, man. What time? Man, it ain't 11. I, I can't even do nothing until 11 o'clock at night yet. Okay? So it's real. The dark. And we see whips and lost below from the evil of the darkness. The next ayat, number four. And from the evil of those who practice witchcraft when they blow in the knots. And we seek refuge in Allah's law from those who practice witchcraft. So we're asking Allah to protect us from witchcraft, sorcery, etc. Those that blow knots and do incantations and whatnot, tie knots and whatnot, get your hair, right? Witchcraft, sorcery, magic. Okay? Did y'all know that this ayah was talking about that? If you didn't, now you know. See, when we just read it, cool, I feel like many, I feel like many, No, man, this got some, it got history behind it. It got stories behind this, this surah. It got meaning behind it. It's serious. So when you recite it now, inshallah, you recite it with a little bit more uh, seriousness and understanding what it is that you're reading. Man, you're asking a lot to protect you from magic. Man, you're asking a lot to protect you from the evil of the world. You're asking a lot to protect you from the darkness, the goons and goblins that come out of that grip. You're asking a lot to protect you from witchcraft and sorcery. Okay? Then the last ayat, number five, and from the evil of the envier when he envies. And now the envier, the envious one, when he envies, you're talking about Shaitan himself. So you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from Shaitan himself, or it could be general from the haters. Those who envy you when they envy the envious ones, the main envious one, the main hater of all is, is Shaitan. So you ask Allah to protect you from shaitan because he's envious. He's envious of, envious of us. He's envious of mankind because we're in the race position. We have the opportunity of being even higher than the angels when we're in, dis in, in obedience to Allah's law. When we're in obedience to Allah's law, we have the opportunity of being higher than the angels because the angels, they don't have free will. They only obey Allah's law. So we ask Allah to protect us from shaitan and all the haters, all the envious people, haters, envious, jealous ones, this is what we're asking Allah to protect us from. Witchcraft, witchcraft, sorcery, etc., magic, and from shaitan and all the haters or all the envious people. Because shaitan is the most envious person. And then there's others who will be envious of you, especially if you're on the Sadat al Mustaqeen. If you're on the Sadat al Mustaqeen, those who will hate you will be the Shaitan and his soldiers. They call them the Shaitan. They'll hate you. We talked about that. Allah has soldiers, the Mujahideen. And Shaitan has his soldiers, the Shaitan. And Allah said they're friends and protectors of one another, Awliya. They're friends and protectors to one another. Okay, so that's Surah. Fala, that's chapter 113. Now let's go to 114. 114. Surah Al-Nas. Allah states, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Qul a'udhu bi rabbi nas I seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the Lord of mankind. He's the Lord of all of mankind. So I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the Lord of everything, all of mankind. Whether they're good, bad, I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is the Lord 
of all of mankind. Madiki Nas, he is the king or the authority of mankind. Elahi Nas, he is the God of mankind. In his first three ayats, this is a declaration of Tawheed. Right? He's a Rabbin Nas. So he's Rub. He's Malik. Right? And Elahi Nas. Elahi. Right? He's the Lord. He's the King. He's the God. This is all Tawheed. There ain't no other lords other than the lost for the law. There ain't no other kings, right? Maliki Yomadin, he is the king or the authority of the day of judgment. He is the only one that will be able to determine whether you're going to heaven or hell. Ain't nobody even going to be able to speak. Not the angels, nobody. He's Maliki Yomadin. Ilahi Nas. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. This is a declaration of Tawheed. You're negating anybody else, and you're saying he's Rabbin Nas. Maliki Nas, Ilahi Nas. Verse 4. Min Shabr al Waswas al Khadnas. And I seek refuge in the loss of the law from the whisperer who withdraws from whispering after he whispers. So we seek refuge in the loss of the law. This is what another, another name. Another name of Shaitan. He is Al Khanas. Al Khanas. Right? He is the whisperer that retreats. After whispering, I give an example. One of the best examples, or one of the examples of him whispering, is in the Battle of Badr. In the Battle of Badr, we're told in Hadith that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said that Shaitan came in the form of an old man, right? Because Shaitan can shift change. The jinn they can shift change. The only person that Shaitan cannot imitate. Is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But the shaitan, they can shift change, they can turn, and you might think of somebody, it could be a jinn right before your eyes. So at the Battle of Badr, we're told that shaitan came in the form of an old man, pumping up the people of Quraysh. Come on, man, you can do it. You can do it. You can win. Can nobody beat you today? Let's go. And then he said that when they came to the battlefield, Shaitan said, uh-oh, I see what you see not, man, I'm, I'm out of here. But he got them all the way to the battlefield, pumped them up, right? Then when they got there, yeah, yeah, then Shaitan said, man, I'm out of here, bye. And left him because now he's seen the malaika, he's seen the, 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 the obedient jinn, he's seen the help of Allah, the rahmah of Allah, he didn't want no parts of that. But he whispered to you, like some people they get they get caught, they they in the police car, they was raw, hard and everything, but then they get in the police car, but they was hard as concrete. Shaitan pumped them up. They got that alcohol in their system. They ready to tear stuff up. Once they sober up, they don't even know how they got there. I don't even know what I don't, I don't even remember what happened. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Shaitan did that. He whispered you, got you all the way there, got you to kill somebody. And then took off. Huh? He's al Khanas. He's the whisperer and he retreats. Also on the day of judgment, it said that the people, they will blame Shaitan. Man, he made me do it. Shaitan will say, no, I didn't. All I did was whisper to you, partner. And you did it on your own. All I did was whisper, man. You that weak? I ain't even got no power to touch it. All I did was whisper. Just like I did Adam and Eve. So who's the coldest player? She's cold. He's cold with his spit. Shaitan is cold with his spit. He's so cold, he can say, without a shadow of a doubt, man, I, my game is so cold, man, I got Adam and Eve kicked out of paradise. That's cold. They spoke to God himself. But I still got them kicked out of paradise. That's cold. That's why he's called Al-Garur. He is the deceiver. He is the pimp of all pimps. He pimping you out your soul. He pimping you out of paradise like he did Adam and Eve. Off his spit. Huh? Off his spit. Just his spit. Just his verbalage. He ain't even got to do nothing. He just tell you. 
You gotta remember that Shaitan been around since the beginning of Adam and Eve, since the beginning of time. So the same tricks, he know how to use the tricks, he's been using tricks for thousands of years. Right? Uh, modifying the trick, you know what I'm saying? Passing down these tricks, passing down these certain things to his share team, passing it down to the jinn, right? What did the Prophet Muhammad tell us? I'm saying, every person is appointed two jinns. We got jinns, and their job is what? To take you off the Salat al Mustaqim. Who do you think they get their information from? Who do you think tells them what type of tactics to use against you? Shaitan. The same cat that got Adam and Eve kicked out of paradise, he telling them what type of tricks to you. Well, look, man, this is what you do, man. If you really want to do it like this, this is what you do. You go ahead and do it like this, man. I'll tell you, man, I use that against Napoleon. <laughs> I use that against Cain and Abel, man. I did that, you know. Come on, that's how you do it. Same tricks. From the evil whisperer, the devil who whispers evil in the hearts of men, who withdraws from the whispering in one's heart after one remembers Allah. Verse 5. The one who whispers into the hearts of mankind. So receive the rest of the lost law from those who whisper into your heart. Okay? Now the next ayat is very cold. So Allah says, and we seek rest of the lost law from the whisper. The whispers of the heart. From who? It says from jinn and mankind. So he said that not only do the jinn whisper to you to take you off the Salat the Mustaqim, there will be people from the mankind that will whisper to you to take you off the Salat the Mustaqim. You got men and jinn, they could be of the shared team. Just because it's a jinn, it don't mean that's just a shaitan. There are human jinn or human shared team. No, I can't say human genes, because you can't be a gene and a human. But you could be a human devil. Not the devil, but from the devils of the shared team. Anyone who helps Shaitan is of the shared team. Anyone who whispers to you, right? Like I said in the ayat in chapter 2, verse 102, and there are some people that do magic to cause separation between husband and wife. These are shared team. Somebody that try to get you to have some type of uh uh, a split in your household or have you arguing with your wife, arguing with your husband. Well, you know, if I was you, I wouldn't do this. Man, they whisper to you. They whisper to you, being like shaitans, whispering into your heart to cause corruption or cause a split. Because the wife is supposed to obey who? The husband. She let anybody else whisper in her ear, that's a problem. The husband is the imam. And we learn again from the story of Adam and Eve. We learn from Adam and Eve, we learn the mistakes that were made. Right? That's why Allah said, we give us these stories. So we get wisdom from them. Right? Adam and Eve, they was in paradise. Allah told them, commanded them to do certain things. Don't go to that tree. Here comes shaitan. Straight to the woman. Straight to the woman. So women, this is my nasiha. Be very careful because the shaitan coming through you. He's going to come to you at all times. That's his, that's his sunnah. Right? That's his sunnah. He's going to come to you. He's going to whisper to you. He's going to have other people whispering at you. Okay? So listen to your husband. Especially if he's telling you Quran and sunnah. If he ain't telling you Quran, you don't have to obey him in that. But you have to obey your husband in the Quran and the Sunnah. Don't listen to nobody else. He's going to come to you. The men. Now see how for the men. We have to rule by the Quran and the Sunnah. We are the imams of the house. We can't let shaitan in our house. We can't let shaitan in the mix. We have to be strong with resolve. And don't just, okay. Okay, whatever. Well, I don't want her mad at me. Okay, whatever you want to do. No, man. That's what Adam did. That's what Adam did, and they both got kicked out. Boop. Both of them got kicked out for playing with Allah. Okay? And we use the story of Ayub and Salam who got it right. He got it right. 
Because his wife, here comes, Shaitan. He tried to whisper to her. And she came to her husband and we said, no, nope, not this time. Man, if you, and if you don't, matter of fact, when I get out of this situation, I'm going to lash you 100 times. And it said that he grabbed 100 leaves and hit her one time to fulfill his oath. Okay? But this is very important. Again, this is chapter 113 and 114. These chapters are used to protect us against magic. Okay, there's a lot of wisdom in these surahs. Right? We read them three times. And after this, we read, We blow on our hands and we wipe over the body, your feet, everything. Your whole body three times. And this will protect you from magic. Okay? When you walk about the house, you say Bismillah, Allah, This will protect you from the jinn and magic. When you go to sleep, you recite Ayat al Kursi, chapter 2, verse 255. This will protect you from the jinn until Fajr time. So we have many types of weapons. But magic is real. The Prophet Muhammad was bewitched. So therefore, we protect ourselves, we use the weapons of the Prophet. We don't use magic to combat magic. I ain't got to go to no witch doctor. Oh, I've been bewitched. Okay, I got to go to a witch doctor to go do magic on me. Get the feathers on me. No. Now you just committed shirk. We don't go to palm readers in Islam. That's shirk. We don't go to fortune tellers in Islam. That's shirk. We don't go to tea leaf readers. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You get the tea, they turn it upside down and they read it. That's shirk. Shirk. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, the one who goes to a palm reader, fortune teller, and believes what that person says, they have committed, they have denied what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu brought, and they committed shirk. So astrologies, horoscopes, you're going to click it, what does it say today? Oh, I'm a Virgo, I'm a dude. Let me see what it says, it's going to happen to me today. If you do that and you believe it, you committed shirk. Shirk. Right again. So these are the things that we stay away from. Right? Horoscopes, palm readers, card, uh, to, uh, tarot card readers, card readers, tea leaf, tea leaf readers, wishing on a star, 